Hello and good morning students. Once again good to see you in today's 15th lecture. Today's lecture we are going to continue our discussion and understanding about the chapter 16 that we initiated in the last lecture, Participles and Gerents. In the last lecture we covered the topic about Gerents first as given to us in the sequence. Today we are going to read, infer, understand about the second part of the chapter that is participles given to us as the let's learn section on page number 133. Followed by that we will be looking into the exercises, we performed exercises, exercise A and B followed by the fun tasks which is the differentiation between participles and gerund as I said in the last lecture. So without further ado, let's proceed and try to read from the let's learn section and acknowledge ourselves about participles. Well, when the word participle comes to your mind, two things very casually come to you that is present participle and past participle. That are the two forms of verbs. Present form, past form, past participle form and the present participle form. So, we can say there are four forms as I said earlier. In the lesson section, we have been given to read the following are examples of present participle which end in ing and represent an action as ongoing or incomplete or imperfect. So, we can have three different possibilities when we use the ing form of the verb in a sentence. So, let us analyze each of these examples to understand what they are telling us. We met a girl carrying a pot of milk on her head. So, what is being said over here that we met a girl who was doing the action of carrying the pot on her head. So, the action of carrying the pot was going on at the time of meeting. Hence, we can say that the ing word used over here is not a gerund. It is a participle over here. We met a girl carrying a pot of milk on her head. We learned about gerunds. So, now you should try to compare the prior knowledge of gerunds that you took in the last lecture and what you are learning right now at every stage. Hearing the noise, the child woke up. See, it's a nice sentence to understand. Hearing the noise, the child woke up. Here you will be seeing the first word hearing. In earlier sentences in the part of gerunds, when we understood gerunds in the last lecture, we had similar sentences where the first word was ing. Here too, you have the first word ing, but here the word hearing is not a gerund. It is a participle over here. Hearing the noise, the child woke up. So, when the child was hearing that ongoing noise, the action was going on, the child woke up. His sleep got disturbed and the action of waking up was completed. So, we can say here the word hearing is not a gerund. But let me try to give you another example in order to justify this. If I say hearing is a gift of God, now here I am actually using the word hearing in my second example over here. But here I am saying the ability to hear that is vested within me is a quality. Therefore, in this sentence hearing is a gift of God. The word hearing appears as an ing form of the verb participle, present participle. But it is not a present participle over here. It is not a participle. Perhaps it is a gerund. Because I am using that word as a noun, as a subject of the verb is. Hearing is a gift of God. So, by comparing these two sentences, hearing is a gift of God and the given sentence, hearing the noise, the child woke up. Both are having the first word hearing. But in the given sentence, hearing is a participle. Whereas in the second example that I just uh, said to you is a gem. I hope this is clear to you. Moving ahead to the third example. The boy, thinking all was safe, tried to cross the road. So, he tried the action of crossing the road. Why? Because he was thinking, the action of thinking was going on at that time when he crossed the road. So here too, the word thinking is not a gerund. It is a present participle showing the action that was going on, the action of 
crossing the road again drive to cross the road again say it's an imperfect action the action is still not completed well moving ahead with the next set of sentences and examples the following are examples of past participles well that is the second type of third type of verb deceived by his best friend he lost all hope we'll have a careful look over here deceived the third form of the verb deceive present form deceived is the past form and once again the same spelling same pronunciation deceived is the past participle deceived by his friend he lost all hope you can say it is a word used in the passive way of writing driven by hunger the man stole a loaf of bread and this too we have the word driven as the past participle that is the third form of the verb which we use in the perfect tenses we saw some trees laden with fruit in the active voice we saw some trees laden with fruit so words deceived driven and laden are all three examples of the past participle form of the verb either used in the active voice or the passive voice well <clears throat> these were three examples of past participle i hope the present participle and the understanding of past participle is a is quite quite clear to you well besides these two participles that we learned which we have been learning present participle and past participle besides this we have the third kind of participle called perfect participle which i probably believe you must have not come across in the earlier classes so in this class you going to acknowledge yourself with one more kind of participle that is perfect participle let us see what is perfect participle besides the present and past participle there is a there is the perfect participle the third kind of participle that represents an action as completed so the action is completed at some point of time in the past so the action was completed not now but at some point of time and you are referring to that by using both the words you will be you will be utilizing the word in the present participle as well as the past participle together in the sentence let us see in these examples to understand better having lost our way we stopped to ask for direction and the second example having done our homework we went out to play so what is being expressed over here the idea being expressed that at some given point of time you asked someone the way having lost your way you have not lost your way right now at that given point of time that is at some point of time in the past when you had lost your way you stopped to ask direction from someone but see the combination used over there having lost having contains the ing word whereas lost is the past participle form of the verb so the combination of the two that is having and lost together creates the perfect participle so i hope the understanding of perfect participle is now clear to you well having done so you see having is the ing form and done which is the past participle of the original verb do is a combination of the two having done so you have done the work at some given point of time in the past and then you went to play so having done our homework we went out to play is the next example that i just read out to you having done having lost are the two perfect participles or the third part is third kind of participle that you learned so all together there were three participles present participle and past participle which you already had the understanding about and you gained the knowledge about perfect participle that is use of the present participle and the past participle together in a sentence well these were the three participles moving ahead we have the next thing to read and understand that is participles can be used to join pairs of sentences together yes just like uh, earlier we learned about how to join sentences with the help of conjunctions and in the 15th chapter we learned how to join sentences with the help of infinitives uh, we are going to understand read and understand about how to join sentences with 
participle but when let me tell you you have to be very very careful so you have three examples given to you well each of these example has a different thing to explain so be very very attentive first sentence first example sentence we saw some children one sentence and followed by the next sentence they were playing with fireworks so two different sentences we are going to join them with the help of the ing word or a present participle or a participle over here let us see how it has been done for us we saw some children playing with fireworks so if you carefully observe over here the word playing was already given to you in the second sentence the availability of the ing word was already there in the second sentence what have we simply done we saw some children we have eliminated the word they that is the subject and the auxiliary verb were and we have utilized the word playing and added and joined the two sentences we saw some children playing with firework simply we have taken up the words along with the ing word and joined it or fused it within the first sentence so it's a very simple one to understand have you the second example sentence i was hungry i made myself a sandwich well this is different from the first one have a very careful observation we i was hungry i made myself a sandwich unlike the first example where we had two sentences and the second sentence already contained the ing verb within it we do not have an ing verb in this in any of these sentences so let us see how are we going to join these two sentences what difference we are going to do over here i was hungry i made myself a sandwich can be joined by using an additional ing word that is being well the original ing word has been derived from the word be b plus ing the member of the b family if you see the word was it is one of the members of the b family isn't it so i was hungry i made myself a sandwich where i which is the pronoun or the subject would be replaced and the word was which is the auxiliary verb will be replaced by the word be and then adding ing into it so we are changing was into its original form that is the head of the family that is be and then applying the ing into it making it as the word be being hungry so i was feeling hungry so being hungry comma i made myself a sandwich observe the punctuation mark comma over there because this is a complex sentence which has a dependent clause and an independent clause being hungry is a dependent clause and i made myself a sandwich is the independent clause we learned about dependent and independent earlier being hungry i made myself a sandwich so when you do not have any ing given to you in either of the sentences you will have to apply an ing relevant word as required in the sentence here we were required to write being because we had the auxiliary verb was which was now modified as b and then the ing was applied into it b plus ing being so being hungry i made myself a sandwich next example the magician took pity on the mouse one sentence he turned it into a cat another sentence have a careful look the magician took pity on the mouse one sentence and he took he turned it into a cat another sentence but none of these sentences are carrying any ing word within it just like we had the first one so what should we write it according to the first one by saying uh, being magician well being doesn't suit over here because we do not have any auxiliary verb over here in the second sentence when we utilize the word being we had the auxiliary verb was which was modified into its original form be but here we do not have any auxiliary verb we have the magician took pity on the mouse he turned it into a cat well if you carefully observe the first sentence you will definitely find a verb over there but not an auxiliary verb instead you have a main verb and the main verb is in its past tense well that is okay if it is in past tense but we have a verb t w o k took have a very careful observation because this is the third way or the third pattern of changing or joining the two sentences the magician took pity on the mouse he turned it into a cat but took is the verb that we have now we are going to utilize this took 
and put it into its base form and then add ing into it uh, making our ing requirement or fulfilling our ing requirement taking pity on the mouse comma the magician turned it into a cat have a very careful observation taking taking has been created into the ing work the participle required to join but here how did we make it we took the actual verb took which is the main verb given to us unlike the other two sentences in the first we already have ready made one plain in the second we had the auxiliary verb was which we transformed it into the ing but here we have a stipulated verb in the past tense a main verb took took is now changed to taking taking pity on the mouse so we are eliminating the word uh, or we are modifying the sentences by making it into a complex one taking pity on the mouse comma the dependent clause and then writing the main clause where we are utilizing the word the magician from the first sentence putting it into the second one the magician because we are replacing the word he which is a pronoun with the noun the magician have a careful look the magician turned it into a cat so here the magician turned it into a cat is the independent clause taking pity on the mouse is the dependent clause and taking how did it come into existence we used it from the verb given to us in the first sentence by applying the ing so three different patterns one where we already have the ing second where we have the auxiliary verb members of the be family was or were or similar words can be changed into be ing being and the third one is the magician took pity on the mouse where we had took as a main verb changing into the ing verb so i hope the three different patterns are now clear to you where we can use to join the two sentences well alternatively you can see the above one also which we just read about perfect participle yes we just understood a perfect participle having lost our way we stopped to ask for direction and having done our homework we went out to play there too you have found the ing word which was utilized to join actually two sentences well we will have to make use of this in the exercises as we go through it we have two exercises to do exercise a and b related to the participles so let us perform together combine each of the following pairs of sentences using a participle the first one has been done for you as an example let's go through it and find out in what manner what pattern the first one has been done and put our hands on the rest of the nine sentences we met an old woman one sentence she was carrying a bundle of sticks on her head so if you just correlate this sentence with one of the example sentences you will easily be able to locate that it is resembling to the first example the same one we saw some children they were playing with fireworks similarly it has been done for us we met an old woman we have eliminated the subject she and the auxiliary verb was we have utilized the other words in the sentence in the second sentence carrying a bundle of sticks on her head and simply amalgamated or joined the two sentences we met an old woman carrying a bundle of sticks on her head very simple to do well we have uh <clears throat> the other sentences to perform so let's perform and write this on the board and as we do it we will try to discuss about each one of them or each one of its pattern exercise a combine each of the following pairs of sentences using a participle well second one we watched the boys they were floating paper boats on the river Well, let's join the two sentences. 
sentence together appropriately. Well, if you carefully observe this, we watch the boys one sentence, they were floating, we already have the identity given to us. Simply, we need to eliminate the subject and the auxiliary verb and join the rest of the sentence into the first one. Very simple one. We watched the boys. We watched the boys playing or oh, floating. Floating paper, paper boats on the river. So, in this manner, we have joined the two simple sentences with the help of a participle given to us already in the second sentence. Next, we have on page number 134, third one. He failed in the first attempt, he refused to try again. He failed in the first attempt. He refused to try again. Well, carefully observe the given two sentences over here. <coughs> what do you feel about it? How are you going to join this? Because you do not have any ing word in any of these sentences. So you will have to look into the example sentences given to you because as you are doing for the first time, let me take you through the three patterns once again. You can see the first one, the ing given to us. But the other two, where we utilize the word being, where we had the auxiliary verb was changing into the uh, member of the B family, B plus ing. And the third one, as I explained, where we have the uh, <coughs> main verb, without the auxiliary verb took, changing into taking. Do you feel any of this thing can be applied over here? He failed in the first attempt, he refused to try again. Do you have any auxiliary verb over here? No, we do not have any auxiliary verb over here. So, using the word B, I, N, G, B will not be suitable because we do not have any member of the B family present over here. So, there is no point of using the second pattern. First pattern cannot be used, second pattern cannot be used. However, third pattern, he failed where we have the main word uh, over here just like we had the word took in the example sentence. Yes, we have the word failed over here but are we going to use failing? Failing in the first attempt, he refused to try again. So is the action of failing going on at the time of speaking? No. But in the example sentence as we said, taking pity on the mouse. So the magician was doing that action of taking pity. Okay when the magician was turning it into a cat. So the action of taking pity was going on at that time. Therefore, we were able to utilize taking pity in that example sentence here. Failing in the first attempt cannot be written. Then what? How are we going to combine this? Have a look at the <coughs> perfect participle. You will get the answer over there. Where if you think properly, you will find that the first attempt that you have given appear in your test or examination is already done. The action is completed at some point of time in the past. Therefore, we will be utilizing that pattern of writing over here by writing having. So, we will begin our answer by writing having. Having failed. So, we are using a perfect participle rather than using the three patterns given to us for joining. This is also one of the patterns. Having failed in the first attempt, having failed in the first attempt, we have to apply a comma over here because this is the dependent clause. Having failed in the first attempt, he refused. manner, we will be joining the two sentences given to us using the perfect participle over here, having failed, where we have ing as well as the past participle. So, present participle, past participle together was utilized in order to join the two given sentences. Let's move ahead to fourth one. I was occupied. 
occupied with important matters, I had no time to attend to her. I was occupied with important matters. One sentence, I had no time to attend to her. Two sentences to be joined with the help of ING form the verb. Let us see what is suitable over here. We do not have any ING given to us, that is for sure. So we are not using that, the first pattern. It is the second pattern. I was occupied. If you happen to click in your mind the word was, we had a similar example sentence where we had the auxiliary verb was, isn't it? Being hungry. I was hungry. So same pattern we are going to use over here because we have the auxiliary verb which can be modified into B plus ing. Therefore, let's do this. Being occupied. with important matters then I need to apply comma over here this is the dependent clause hence comma is required I had no time to attend to her so I hope this is now getting clear to you how and when to or how to write the or join the sentences. Next one, number five. The policeman ran as fast as he could. He was able to catch the thief. Two sentences. Join the two sentences. Well, do you find any ing words given to you? No. So for sure we are not going to use the first pattern. We have to use the other pattern. Think about it. Which one is suitable over here? You carefully see the policeman ran. Well, you do not have any auxiliary verb or one of the member of the B family. So there is no point using B over here. About, about, apart from that, if you think about this one, that is the perfect part. That too also will not suit over here. The policeman ran. We have the main verb ran just like we have took, isn't it? The magician took pity. We have the policeman ran. So we have the word ran over here. Yes, definitely we will be able to use the ing form of the verb over here, but we will not be able to use the perfect participle because we are not talking about some action that happened in the past. We are talking about the current action going on. Okay, at the time of speaking, the policeman ran as fast as he could. He was able to catch the thief. Let's write it in this manner. Running. We have modified ran into running by taking the base word run plus ing, repeating an n. Running as fast as he could. Running as fast as he could. The policeman. We are replacing the pronoun he with the policeman over here. This is going to be our independent clause. The policeman was able to catch the thief. You see, in this manner, we will be able to apply the third pattern from the patterns that we had learned using or changing the original word or the main verb given in the sentence into its ing form. Well, we have the next one, number 6. The weather was warm, I took off my coat. Let's do it together. Sixth one.
Let's combine the two. Have a careful observation. The weather was warm. I took off my coat. We do not have any ing uh, verbs given to us over here. Therefore, we'll have to use one of the patterns that we have acknowledged. If you carefully observe the thing, the weather, and we have after that the word was. Well, we have the word was. It means we will be able to change it into the uh, B plus ing form. That is the member of the B family. Well, accordingly, we have to do it. The weather being warm. So I hope you are being able to understand when to use being, when to use having, when to use the ing with the main verb or other things. The weather being warm, I need to apply the comma over here because this becomes my <coughs> dependent clause. The weather being warm. What did I do? I took off my coat. So in this manner, the two sentences have been combined, joined together. Seventh one. We arrived at the station. We saw the train leaving. Let's combine the two appropriately. Well, think about it. What could you do with this sentence? How could you join the two sentences? We arrived at the station. You can fully observe the word arrive. It is in the past tense, just as we had the example sentence, the magician took pity. So we arrived at the station. Your action of your arriving is happening. Isn't it? Isn't it? It is going on action, an ongoing action. So, arriving at the station, we saw the train leaving. So, when you were arriving at the station, you were able to see simultaneously the train was leaving from the platform. So, you can write over here, arriving at the station, comma, arriving at the station, what happened? We saw Train leaving. So, in this manner, we are able to join the two given sentences into one with the help of the ing word. Next one, number eight. He knocked loudly at the gate, he demanded admission. He not loudly at the gate, he demanded admission. When well, someone is asking permission to come inside by doing a loud knock. So he knocked loudly at the gate, he demanded admission. Think about it. Do we have any ING words already given to us? No. So the first pattern is not possible to be done over here. Yes, you have the word not given to you, just have you had the word arrived over here. So similar pattern you will be able to furnish over here, establish over here. Well, let us see how we will write this. We do not have any auxiliary verb was over here, so there is no point of writing being over here. Uh, you are telling that uh, <coughs> someone is demanding admission, and how is it demanding? When, how is somebody going to ask, the, allow you to come inside? When you are doing the action of knocking over there, isn't it? So, we have to use the word knock, change into knocking. Knocking at the door, knocking loudly at the door, at the gate, comma, he demanded admission. Other things are not suitable over here. If you are thinking that you will be able to write over here, having knocked loudly at the gate. So, 
it will be indicating some action that was done in the past. No, you are trying to say that right now somebody is knocking at the door and along with that knocking at the door, it means that someone wants to come inside. Therefore, this is the only appropriate way of writing. Knocking loudly at the gate, he demanded admission. Next one, number 9. The bank was closed. I could not open an account. Let's join the two sentences given to us appropriately. Careful observation. The bank was closed. We have the auxiliary verb was, which can be changed into its member of the B family. So we can write the bank. Rather interesting and not interested. So, 
choose the word interesting and fill it in the blank. I hope you are writing it down with a pencil. The documentary was rather interesting and not interested. Second one, everybody was shocked, shocking or shocked to hear the news. Try to insert one at a time the dry letter method. Everybody was shocking to hear the news. If I say put the word shocking over there, everybody was shocking. No, I can't say everybody was shocking. People are not shocking to me. The news is shocking, isn't it? So everybody got the shock. Therefore, we will say everybody was shocked to hear the news. So I will be utilizing the past participle shocked over here and not the present participle shocking. Everybody already got that shock. So everybody was shocked to hear the news and not shocking. Next one, the third one, we have two blanks. So be very careful and two sets of words we have. While dash to New Delhi and we have the options flying and flown. I met a dash well-known and well-knowing TV personality. So go through the sentence once again and see what suits over there. While dash to New Delhi. While flying to New Delhi, while you were in the traveling position or when you were traveling to New Delhi, while flying to New Delhi, I will be inserting flying over there and not flown. Flown is the past participle an action that is completed. You are trying to say when you were flying, you happen to meet someone. While flying to New Delhi, I met a dash TV personality, someone who is already uh, known to people who has already uh, acquired the fame. So we can say, I met a well-known TV personality and not well-knowing. Okay. So the first one, the first blank requires the ing form, the present participle, whereas the second blank requires the past participle. So be very careful when you insert this. While flying to New Delhi, I met a well-known TV personality. Moving ahead to the next one, number four, built or building. Built would be the past participle, building would be the present participle. Let's see what's required. Dash in the 15th century, this house is one of the oldest in this area. Can I say building in the 15th century? 15th century is already gone. And I'm talking about it right. Built in the 15th century. So the house was already built. The construction work is over. So I will have to use a past participle rather than a present participle. Built in the 15th century, this house is one of the oldest in this area and not building over here. Writing building over here would be absolutely incorrect. Next one, number five. The children were sitting on the floor. Dash played or playing with their toys. The children were sitting on the floor playing with their toys and not played with their toys. Well, if you use your discrete intelligence, still you will be able to know that play is appropriate and play is incorrect. Well, they were playing at the time you were speaking this. <clears throat> the people I work with are dash, satisfying or satisfied with their job. The people I work with, so you are working with a number of people, you and the other people, they all are having work satisfaction. Therefore, you will be writing over here satisfied and not satisfying. Somebody is not satisfying you. You are already satisfied with the work that you are doing. So the people I work with are satisfied with their job. They are happy with their job. They are satisfied with their job. Then what they have, what work they are doing is good. So satisfied is the required word. The past participle, not the present participle. Seventh one. John was dash disgusting, disgusted by the news report. So John <coughs> got some news report and when he read that news report or when he came to know about the news report, what happened? He was disgusting, the action was going on or he was disgusted. What is the required thing over here? John was disgusted. We already have the word was, therefore it helps us to identify the right verb over here. John was disgusted by the news report. Okay, so we require the past participle, not the present participle over here. Number eight, young children are often dashed of the dark. Well, young children are often scared of the dark and not scaring of the dark. The action is not going on. 
We're not talking about some ongoing action. We're talking about a general thing that young children are scared of the dark, isn't it? We thought that the instructions were dash. Yes. You were given instructions and you are thinking. See, we thought that the instructions were confused. Instructions were not confused, you were confused, isn't it? So you are having that thought process in your mind going on about that the instructions were confusing. You are describing the instructions by writing confusing over there. We thought that the instructions were confusing and you don't say we thought that the instructions were confused. Well, instructions were not confused. You were confused with the confusing instructions. Well, number 10, it is a dash little story. You should read it. It is an dash little story. Amused little story. Amused means entertained. So, can I say it? It is an amused little story. Is the story amused? No. When you read the story, you will get amused. Therefore, we are describing how the story was. Therefore, we will have to utilize the ing word over here. Whether it is the participle or the gerund. It is an amusing little story. We are describing it by using the ing word over here. It is an amusing little story. You should read it. Number 11. Are you dash worrying or worried about your studies? So a question is being asked over here. Someone is questioning you. Are you worrying? No. When you ask question, are you worried? So we are using a past participle over the present participle over here. Are you worried about your studies? So somebody is asking you a question. We require the past participle, not the present participle. We are not saying are you worrying about your studies? No, not an ongoing action. Twelfth one. All this information has left me dash. Confused? Confusing. Well, once again we have the word confused and confusing. Read the sentence carefully in order to select the right one. All this information has left me. See the word left. You are already out of your brains, isn't it? All this information has left me confused. So here we are going to utilize confused and not confusing. We are not saying all this information has left me confusing. No. You are already confused. Your mind is already in a dilemma. So we are utilizing the past participle confused in the 12th one and no confusing this time. 13th one, I had a dash weekend because of the constant rain. Well, I had a dash weekend. Can you say, I had a bored weekend or I had a boring weekend? Well, you were living that time and about which you are talking, the weekend. I had a boring weekend and no bored weekend. The weekend is not bored, you were bored and you were passing that time gradually. So, I had a boring weekend because of the constant rain. You were not able to go out anyway. So, boring weekend. I had a boring weekend and not bored weekend. Make this sure in your mind. 14 point on this page. Working lately every day is dash. Well, working lately every day is dash. Is a tiring thing and not tired thing. So, working lately every day is tiring. We are talking about an ongoing action that working lately every day in the present form. Therefore, working lately every day is tiring. You can take the help of the word is, present tense, is tiring, not is tired. So, working lately is not tired, you are tired. These were the 14 sentences. There are a few more, 15 to 20. I hope you will be able to help yourself with the insertion of the right word. Try it out. The next thing that we have to look into is the fun task as given to us on page 137 and 138. So let's go through it and do it together with the picture being displayed on your screen. Prepare a chart as you see given to you. Gerund, participle, qualifying noun or pronoun, function of the gerund. Well, let us discuss the answers to these questions. The first one, hearing a loud noise, we ran to the window. Well, here if you see the word hearing, it would be a participle. Well, we had a similar one 
in the example sentence where I have given you a proper explanation about it. So hearing is a participle over here and it is qualifying the pronoun we. So note it down as you see in the picture being displayed. Next, he ruined his sight by watching TV all day. Here, the word watching, which is an ing word, is a gerund. Why? Because it is functioning as the object of the preposition by, by, as you can very well see, by watching. So, ing over here is playing the role not of a participle, perhaps of a gerund. Next, number three, we saw a clown standing on his head. Here the word standing is the ing word, but it is not a gerund over here. It is not playing any of the four roles that we have learned. It is not used as the subject of the verb, nor as the object of the verb, nor as the complement of the verb, uh, nor as the object of the preposition. It is simply indicating uh, in the sentence an action over here. We saw a clown. The clown was doing some action. What action? Standing on his head. So it is qualifying the noun a clown. So write it, insert it as you see in the <coughs> answer being shown to you. Fourth one, waving their hands, the audience cheered the winner. Well, we have the word waving right in the beginning of the sentence, but do not get carried away or misguided as waving being just the first word, therefore it is a gerund. Here it is not a gerund, it is a participle, an ing, present participle, ing verb, action doing word. Waving their hands, the audience cheered the winner, just like the first sentence we had, hearing a loud noise. Well, it is not modifying or it is not being used as the subject of the verb just because it is in the beginning. We have the entire uh, <coughs> word uh, qualifying the audience over here. Waving their hands. Who are waving their hands? The audience are waving their hand and cheering the winner. Therefore, waving is a participle, not a gerund. Moving ahead, the next one, number five. Plucking flowers is forbidden. Well, here the word plucking is a gerund because it is being used as the subject of the verb is is subject of the verb is yes that's true it is in the beginning of the sentence it is forming the subject part and it is uh, functioning as the subject of the verb is well it is not having any kind of noun that it is qualifying therefore it acts as a sub subject of the verb is next again we have ing in the beginning jumping over the fence the thief escaped but this time it is a participle and not a gerund. Well, be very careful selecting between gerunds and participles. Jumping over the fence. Who escaped? We have an action doing word in the second part of the sentence. That is the independent clause. The thief escaped. So, escaping was done by the thief by jumping over the fence. Therefore, jumping over here is a participle qualifying the noun the thief. Moving ahead to the seventh one. I was surprised at John being absent. Well, have a careful look. I was surprised at John being absent when you have B-E-I-N-G being as the I-N-G word which is being used over here as the functionality of object of the preposition at. At John being absent. So at and being where being has been written after the preposition at John being. Therefore, here the word being is a gerund, not a participle and qualifying object of the preposition at. Next one, number nine. A miser hates spending his money. Well, here it is a gerund. As you see, spending ing has been used to show the function of the object of the verb H-A-T-E-S hates. A miser hates doing something, hates spending. So, here you can see that spending is <coughs> qualifying or it is being used as a functionality of the object of the verb. Therefore, it is a gerund and not a participle. Next one, number 10. John was angry at Alice trying to lie him. Well, once again, it is similar to the seventh sentence, if you see, 
John was angry at Alice. At Alice trying. Trying is the ing word over here. Acting as a gerund over here, not a participle. And what is the role it's playing? Functionality of object of the preposition act. Just like we had in the seventh statement. The eleventh one. Have a careful look. Praising all alike is praising none. Well, here you have to be a little careful. Here you have both of these acting as a gerund over here. None of these is a participle over here. It is gerund. Have a careful look. Praising all alike. So here the first praising is acting as the subject of the verb, functioning as a subject of the verb. Whereas the second praising is the complement of the verb over here. Complement of the verb is over here. It is showing as a complement over here. So we have both the words praising used as a gerund in this sentence and not as even one of them as a participle over here. So be very very careful understanding this praising is praising all alike is praising none. Next one number twelve. Are you afraid of speaking the truth? Well, here is a very controversial one. Let me try to explain this. Are you afraid of speaking the truth? If at first you look into this sentence and try to understand, are you afraid of speaking the truth? And just look at the word speaking the truth, where you will find that action of speaking is happening, qualifying the noun speaking what? Speaking the truth. Then you will be able to <coughs> pursue it and analyze it as the participle, qualifying the noun the truth. But if you uh, re look into it in a different manner are you afraid of you will find the word afraid of as a combination word over here as we learned earlier in the explanation part there are some adjectives and verbs which come along with the preposition and therefore it is to be followed by a gerund and not by an infinitive we learned about this in the explanation part so are you afraid of so if i take into consideration afraid of as a combination word over here the verb and the preposition then Speaking would be acting as a gerund over here. Therefore, we have a controversial controversy over here that it could be as a participle if it is qualifying the noun the truth, and it could be a gerund if we are looking at it as a combination word used over here, afraid of. Well, therefore, we can consider it as both participle as well as a gerund over here. Next one, number thirteen. Singing to herself is her chief delight. Here we have the word ing singing. Singing to herself is her chief delight. Subject of the verb is. Here the word singing is used as a subject in a sentence right in the beginning. Well, what is it functioning over here? Subject of the verb is. Singing is her chief delight. If I try to eliminate the Two words in between to herself, and just say singing is her chief delight. Then you will be able to understand the sentence better, or pursue the sentence better as a gerund and not as a participle. Therefore, singing is a gerund, having subject of the verb is. Finally, we have the fourteenth one. Walking down the street, he spotted a deer across the road. Walking down the street. Well, we have a complex sentence over here where we have got. The dependent clause first, and then we have the independent clause. He spotted a deer across the road. So clearly, it can be understood over here that walking over here is not the name of something. Therefore, it is not a gerund. We are saying the action of going down. So walking is nothing but simply a participle qualifying the noun. Who is walking down? He. He is the person who is walking down. He spotted a deer across the road. So walking. Is a participle over here and not a gerund. Well, this was all for the fantas. I hope you pursued the chapter, the concept about participles quite well, and you've been able to now differentiate between a participle and a gerund well. On page one thirty nine, you have got the let's talk section given to you. Latha and Vani are in the conversation. Let's go through this very very quickly. Vani and Latha are talking about a new park in their neighborhood. So read aloud the dialogue and practice the conversation at your end. Vani, 
Have you visited the new park in your neighborhood? Well, Vani is replying, I have. Walking there, I have, she says first, and then says, walking there is a delight. So, we can very well understand that walking there is an action doing word over here. Therefore, it is a participle and not a gerund. Well, as you read, you should be able to now acknowledge the difference between a participle and a gerund. I agree. There are some beautiful flowering plants. Here the word flowering is describing plants over here. Therefore, it is an adjective being used over here. Flowering plants in the park too. Do you notice? Well, in reply, Vani says, Yes, I did. I love the colorful atmosphere, but it was upsetting to see many people pluck the flowers. So, once again, you have the word ing over there, but it was upsetting. So, here you can see <coughs> it is the gerund over here uh, playing the role or functioning as the object of the verb was in the sentence. Well, moving ahead. True, this is in spite of the warning boards placed, warning boards placed every few steps. Do you mean the ones that say plucking flowers is prohibited? Yes, again you have got the word plucking over here, which is used as a gerund over here, uh, functionally or having the functionality of the subject of the verb is over here. Do you mean the one that says plucking flowers is prohibited? So we have plucking over here as the subject of the verb is. Yes, those are the ones. Although it might be more useful to say plucking flowers is a punishable offense. So once again we have got the word plucking as the subject of the verb is exactly what I was thinking. We have the word thinking at the end over here utilized as the object of the verb was over here. So I hope reading this let's talk conversation also helped you to understand the difference between a participle as well as a gerund. Well, this was all for the chapter, for the lecture. See you soon in the upcoming lecture. Some new things. Till then take care. Have a nice day. Goodbye and see you soon.